Morning, everyone. Welcome back to my study. And I want to begin uh, this week with a little question about song. Two questions, actually. Uh, question one is, where would you look in the Bible for songs? And question two, uh, why do we sing? OK, those are your two questions for us to reflect on this morning. Uh, hit pause, discuss with whoever you're with, come back together with me in a minute. I wonder what you, how you answered the first question. Where would you look for songs? Obviously, you look at the Psalms, don't you? The, the, what we call the songbook of the Bible. It's true, it's the longest book of the Bible, 150 songs uh, for God's people to use in all sorts of situations. But it would be a mistake to think that that was the only place to look for songs, wouldn't it? Uh, the Bible has a variety of genre all over it, uh, and Isaiah is no different. Isaiah has some narrative text, has some prophetic text, and it has several songs in it. We've already encountered one in chapter 12, didn't we? Isaiah 12, a, a song to celebrate the victory of the king in chapter 11. And here in chapter 26 is another song, celebrating the victory of God over the, the crushed enemies in chapter 25 and the, the victory over death and, and so on, which we'll, we'll, we'll come to reflect on uh, as we go through this week. In fact, actually, there are songs in all sorts of places in the Bible. And actually, this one, because it's, it's a song to be sung in the future, is a prophetic song. A bit like the songs at the end of Revelation, where we're told what it is we'll be singing in the new creation. Of course, so many uh, Christian hymns pick up those songs in Revelation and bring them into the present. We sing about God as we will sing about him in eternity. So uh, there are songs all through the Bible. Not many in the New Testament, although there's plenty of instructions to sing, but lots of them through the Bible as a whole. Think of Exodus uh, 15, the song after they've come across the Red Sea. The first thing that Israel does, Miriam writes them a song to be sung, which begs the question, why do we sing? Why do we sing? Helps us, I think, to answer the question, what should we sing in church? Why do we sing? What are the songs for? The first thing to say, I think, is songs make things memorable, don't they? Uh, the, the songs of the Bible, I think, are written uh, often um, in the way we write songs, with, with sort of um, uh, alliteration and uh, rhymes and so on, that are designed to fix in our minds particularly important details. You put them to music. You write songs in such a way that you remember important details. Okay, so that's what the, the what's happening in the Bible. For a pre-literate society, you would uh, you would put your your most important thinking into song, and then memorize it, so that. Uh, the person who didn't have a Bible in their pocket or on their smartphone could nevertheless remember the important things of their faith. And you'll have found this as well as I have, that you find yourself singing right at the moment, Christmas carols as you walk down the street or whatever. Uh, but have you noticed uh, Christmas, not Christmas songs, but Christmas carols are often loaded with brilliant theology. They, we and, and our neighbours, our friends, little children at school have learned brilliant theology by learning Christmas carols. We learn songs to, to carry round in our heads truths that we need to remember. That's what they're designed for. Uh, and, and particularly for those in, in situations where they can't have a, a Bible in their hands. Which really forces us to ask the question, well, what sort of things should we be singing about? Of course, the, the Psalms are great because they cover, they, they, they come in all sorts of situations and, and they meet us where our moods are. If we're feeling depressed, there are psalms for us. There are, often aren't Christian hymns these days. Songs aren't really being written for, for that, are they? Not often. And we often don't start church services on the assumption that people are feeling very low. And perhaps we should do. The Bible allows for that, for, to meet us where we're at, but it doesn't focus on 
who we are and where we're at. Our lives are so changeable, our situations are up and down, aren't they? But the Bible tends to focus on who God is, what God has done, and how big a benefit that is for us. In other words, the focus is not me and my felt needs and my and my feelings. The focus is on who is God, how great are his deeds. Let's remember those deeds. Let's memorialize them. Let's, let's put them in our hearts through song so that we don't forget. Isn't that how the psalmist so often starts his psalms? Why are you downcast, O my soul? Remember what God is like. Let that shape how you feel. Isaiah 26 is a song. It's a song that uh, memorialises a thing that hasn't even happened yet. It fixes in the mind these important details so that we don't forget what God is like as we travel through this present situation, which is often so changeable and, and uncertain. We feel our vulnerability. We feel... Uh, all sorts of things, different days. We wake up, we sit on the wrong side of the bed. But God doesn't change. And the truth about who God is and what he's done doesn't change. Which is why the songs we choose to sing at church are in, deliberately, intentionally loaded with good theology. There are lovely songs full of bad theology. <laughs> and plenty of pop songs. Uh, that are full of terrible theology. Um, but singing a song because its tune is great misses the point. The Bible preserves for us the words and not the music. Uh, if you notice that in the Psalms, you read the Psalms according to the Gittith, you think, what's the Gittith? It's probably a, a, a type of music, but we don't know what it is. We don't need to know it. We do need to know the things that the music was designed to help us to remember. And so we need to make sure that we're choosing songs uh, to sing and to, to fix in our hearts that are uh, good for us because they're true. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, help us to sing today. Help us to fill our, our hearts, our minds, our mouths with your truth such that we are uh, able to remember your truth and remember who you are and what you're doing and how much you've blessed us in times where those things are most necessary. For Jesus' sake, amen. See you again tomorrow.